Okay, the project that we'll be going over is how to write and publish a book. So I've got to complete a bunch of tasks in order to complete the project of the book. Like the first task could be researching for the book, and then the second task writing the book, the third um, editing the book, the fourth uh, printing, and so on. Well, chances are is that you're not going to be writing and publishing a book when it comes to your projects. So just take the concepts that you see me do here and be able to apply it to your project. So for example, if you've got a project on building a home, Maybe the first task would be to draw plans. The second task would be to pour the foundation of the home. The third task would be to uh, build the framework on top of the foundation and so on. In any case, go ahead and take the concepts there and apply it to your project. And the first thing that I'm going to do when it comes to uh, starting my project is to set the project start date. To do that, come up here and click on the project tab. Go to the properties group and click on project information. And there you go, start date. Now the start date coincidentally is the current date, today's date, February 8th, 2013. So project assumes when it comes to creating a project by default is going to be today's date, which of course you don't have to have it today's date. In fact, instead of using today's date, we're going to go back and use an earlier start date. So the two reasons for jumping back to an earlier year, like 2010, to do this project is, first of all, if you're in the middle of a project, if need be, I want to show you how you can backdate your start date. And then second of all, It'll make it much easier to show you the progress as we move along in a later time than it is to be in the current date today and trying to move ahead with the examples that I want to show you. In any case, to go ahead and backdate the start date, you can click on the drop down arrow and click back, 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 or better yet, just go ahead and click inside the start date and type in the, uh, well, we'll go back to August 31st, 2010. But before I do that, let me click and drag the title bar for the window here to move it out of the way. So I can show you over here in the Gantt chart, you see that orange line? That represents the current date, today's date, okay? So keep that in mind when you're working and looking in the Gantt chart, and we'll cover that later on. Let me click and drag this back, which, by the way, you can see you got a drop-down arrow for the current date. You can also backdate the current date as well, but we're going to keep it simple here, and we won't be covering everything that you see in the window here right off the bat. Just keep in mind that this is going to be a process. So we've got the start date here, go ahead and type it in, which by the way, if your project doesn't start on a certain day, but must be completed by a certain day, it doesn't matter when you start, it just has to be finished by a certain date, then you can come down here and say schedule, instead of from the start date, you can say from the finish date. So the start date gets blocked out, and it just says, okay, when's your finish date? And you can go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and say, okay, the project has to be finished by this date, it doesn't matter when you start, it just has to be finished, in which case, it schedules the project from that date and goes backwards. So when you go ahead and you add in a bunch of tasks to be completed with all the durations, like this task takes a week, 10 days, it starts backdating it from the uh, finish date. Well, we're going to keep it simple and say it has to start on this date here, which is going to be, let me click in here and type in the uh, date, 8 slash 31 slash 2010, hit the tab key. You can click on the drop down arrow and you can see it picked it up. It's August 2010 and then there's the uh, day, the 31 that shaded there. Go ahead and click off, and that's when our project's going to start. Now, before I go ahead and click OK, notice over here in the Gantt chart window, remember this is the Gantt chart view, that's the table, this is the Gantt chart, that you can see it's in 2013. If I go ahead and click OK, boom, it takes me back. You can see that dot, 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 that line there, it's kind of tiny. But in any case, that's going to be my start date. That's when the project begins. And the time scale, again, is showing us back in 2010. Um, at this point, I recommend that you actually save your uh, project. It's got the generic title Project 1 until you actually save it and give it a name. So I'll go ahead and click on Save. I'll go to my desktop. And on my desktop, I have my Exercises folder. Double click to open that up. And I'll come down here and name my uh, project file the Software Training Manual. So yeah, we're writing and publishing a book, but it's going to be on a specific software. Okay, and then click Save. Once I save it, you can see back up here in the title bar that instead of the generic Project 1, it's actually the name that I gave it, Software Training Manual. Now, if there's information that you want to add to your project, like you know who the author is, the manager, some comments or keywords that when you're looking for a project, that you can actually spot it if the keywords aren't found in the task. In any case, to go ahead and add additional properties to your project, come up here, click on the File tab, and then info selected by default. Come over here, there's project information. Click on the drop down arrow 
and click on Advanced Properties. Let me click and drag the title bar for the window here down below. You can see the General tab has when the project was created, modified, and last accessed. Then the Summary tab, where we can go ahead and enter in, well, by default, we've got the title up here in the uh, title here. And then we've got the subject, the author, company. You can go ahead and say the manager is also Kurt Kershaw, who's managing the project. Type in some keywords. And these keywords are actually searchable. So when you go ahead and come down here and click on the Start button, you type in, like, let's see, I'm looking for a project that has gummy bears in it. Well, if you type in gummy bears in the keywords here, it'll actually, I don't know why I'm doing this, keywords, and you know, keep using the delimiter, the common, to separate your keywords. In any case, if the words aren't found in the title or in the actual project as a task, as long as you got them in here, it'll actually find it when you do a search, an instant search, from, again, the Windows Start uh, button here in the Instant Search field, okay? And then any comments, and then, of course, a hyperlink base for any links that you add to the project. Okay, let's actually come up here and say it's going to be our spiffy software training manual. In any case, when I'm done, go ahead and click OK. Come back up here, click on the File tab to take us back to the, the last tab that we left in the front stage view, which was the uh, Project tab. Now, one thing I want to go over again that I covered in an earlier training video is that you do have the Undo button, so anything you did, you can undo. And you can click on the drop-down arrow to undo, and we'll keep a history of all the actions that you've done. And this one, Properties, I have one undo action here. And then if I did other things, it would keep track of it. And also I could click undo, 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 and uh, undo everything. Now, when you click the Save button, though, as you recall, this is a warning. When you click Save, the undo disappears. You can no longer undo any of your actions. And it goes from that point forward. So if I go ahead and type in other information, come back here, click on File, go to Project Information, to Advanced Properties, make some changes here. Let's get rid of gummy bears. We don't need that. And click OK. And then click on the File tab. Well, you got the action there to undo. Click Save. It clears the history, and you start back from scratch, okay? So keep that in mind before you click Save. Make sure you don't have to undo anything. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.